in this lecture we would go ahead and do some questions related to microeconomics the aim is to go ahead and solve 600 plus questions clearly multiple choice questions from all aspects of microeconomics that can be asked in net jrf exam okay so we will pick 600 more than 600 questions in the coming videos we will discuss all the aspects of microeconomics all different questions related to microeconomics that can come in net GRF exam. First question. The law of demand refers to, so we know it's simply a relationship between price and quantity demanded. So the answer to this is C. In a typical demand schedule, quantity demanded, we know that demand schedule is, or the law of demand is a uh, a negative relationship between price and quantity demanded so the answer is c normally when price per unit of the good falls we know its quantity always increases so quantity demanded increases because we're talking about normal goods so the answer is a so a fall in price of commodity leads to so when price decreases quantity demanded increases so not fall in demand not shift of demand it's a movement not decrease in real income because prices are decreasing my real income is increasing so increase in the real income fifth demand schedule is shown as of course the demand schedule is the relationship between price and quantity demanded so the answer is uh, c it's only a function of price not a function of size of family, not a function of result in change of state, none of that. Answer is simply C. Market demand for any good is a function of. So when we talk about market demand, market demand is simply the sum of individual demands. So individual A, individual B, and you can total it out. And you will get the market demand. So market demand is also between price and quantity only. It's just that it adds the demand of each individual at a given price. So the answer to sixth question is that it's still market demand is still still a function of the price of the unit of the good. All these other factors, they do affect market demand, but it is not shown through the curve, right? So now when you say, what does it depend upon? What is it a function of? then it becomes a little tricky so the demand market demand depends on price of the commodity it depends on price of relative goods it depends on income of the consumer it depends on taste and preferences it depends on other things also like for example it depends on uh, you know uh, what are the circumstances uh, on what is going to be the future expectation related to certain things so it depends on a lot of factors but this leads to a movement along the demand curve and this leads to shift of the demand curve but it still depends on all of these things so when it says it is a function of the answer is e it's a function of all of the above go to the seventh question the demand curve for a commodity is generally drawn on the assumption that setter is peribus right all other things remain constant so taste income other prices remain constant so the answer is b go to the next question a typical demand curve cannot be so a demand curve typically is downward sloping and since it is downward sloping it you know when we talk about a demand curve it can be convex to the origin this is fine when we say that the demand curve is parallel to the y-axis, 
we are saying that the demand of this commodity is constant irrespective of the price when we say it is parallel to the x axis then we are saying that at given price you can demand anything right so these are all true under different scenarios under elasticity being 1 under elasticity being 0 elasticity being infinity right absolute elasticity but it cannot be upward sloping right typically unless it is an inferior good so the answer to a is d all these are typical demand curves with different elasticities but it cannot be upward sloping to the right okay let's go to the next question when the law of demand operates the demand curve so when the law of demand operates we know that the demand curve is downward sloping from of course left towards right so the answer to the in this a for most consumers apples and oranges are substitute goods okay we take that therefore we would expect now see very simple apple and orange are substitute goods okay so when price of apple is going to increase what is this going to mean it is going to mean that people will shift towards oranges so the demand of orange will increase which means that the demand curve of orange will shift to the right right so a rightward shift in the demand curve of oranges it will shift to the right so the answer to 10th is d okay thank you let's take the next 10 questions for microeconomics question number 11 ceteris paribus clause in law of demand does not mean does not the price of commodity does not change the price of substitute does not change income does not change complementary goods does not change so price you know these things are supposed to be held constant what things price of substitutes income of the consumer price of the complementary goods these are to be held constant so they don't change this is correct but price should change because we are finding the relationship between price and quantity demanded So the answer is A. The next is O. Oh, which of the following could provide an example of exceptional demand curves? Let's take. Let's try and see this. Now let's see. Exceptional demand curves are those demand curves which do not follow the law of demand. now if we talk about given goods they don't follow the law of demand because for them when price increases demand also increases and there is an upward sloping demand curve now when we talk about demand based on fear of future rise in prices that is also correct if you are thinking that there will be an increase in the future prices what will you do you will start demanding more today even when the price might be higher now in this case what is going to happen is that your demand curve is basically going to uh, you know you're going to demand more at the current prices right now the third one is uh the demand for second hand clothes that does not affect your demand really so you know if you start demanding second hand clothes it's not any exceptional demand you will only demand second hand clothes when the price decreases demand for daily newspapers well uh you know this is something where we would like to focus on a bit when we talk about the demand for daily newspapers you will see that even when the price of newspaper increases you may want to hold the demand of newspaper constant you may not want to change the demand of newspaper actually from the utility function point of view these are known as quasi linear references right 
they are known as quasi linear preferences but we uh, in case of quasi linear preferences actually show that then the demand is not a function of the income of the consumer unlike the usual cases so it's it's a different case this newspaper demand salt demand demand of uh, things like toothbrush toothpaste all of these essential commodities are quasi linear preferences but we can still say that they obey the law of demand because you know they are still a function of price actually so in that case what we have in our case is going to be the answer is going to be b that you know it's still a function of given goods and you know demand of today's demand may increase if you are expecting the price to increase in the future please write this down that an exceptional demand curve is one that is upward sloping this is upward sloping demand curve given goods are those goods which anyways don't obey the law of demand when price increases you demand more of them when price decreases you demand less of them so given goods the second is any good that has a prestige value like for example diamond when its price is going to increase you're going to go ahead and demand more of diamond when its price decreases then maybe you know the rich people will think that it is no more a symbol of luxury a sign of luxury and they will actually decrease the demand then you have the price expectation if you are expecting to, the price to change in the future or whenever you have fear of shortage like it happened in case of covid 19 when the governments announced that there is going to be a lockdown all of a sudden then during lockdown what happened during lockdown actually people started even at a high price started collecting the commodities and started increasing the demand of the commodity then whenever there is a change in fashion you may want to consume the commodity even at a high price right so uh, even basic necessities don't follow the law of demand so in that sense uh things like salt toothbrush you can th think about that but i would still like to kind of uh, not keep newspapers in that domain okay so what we can go ahead and we can say is that you know basic necessities can be medicines like during covid 19 again when the price of injections was very high people were increasing the demand of injection salt wheat whatever is super necessary etc these are the commodities that fall under the exceptional demand curve let's go to the next question which of the following is true for increase of normal good when price increases demand decreases now because these are normal goods of course uh, the part a is correct they follow the law of demand when price increases demand increases no they are not inferior goods when price remains constant demand falls no when price falls demand remains constant no they just follow the usual law of demand and they uh, act accordingly with income also so when price increases the demand decreases and when income increases the demand increases this is the case for normal goods okay let's go to the next question now an exceptional demand curve is one that now we know it slopes upwards and now if you think about this then this slopes upwards from left to right right so towards the right not sloping upwards towards the left if it slopes upwards to the towards the left it is actually sloping downwards towards the right no not like that so it slopes upwards to the right okay let's go to the next question when there is increase in the uh, when there is decrease in the demand curve what is going to happen so if we notice if you have decrease in demand the demand curve is going to go ahead and this is your demand curve right there is a decrease in demand means quantity demanded in this case if we go ahead and consider so it is going to move downwards towards that 
See, if you would have done C also, I would have been okay with it, given that you would have backed it saying that this is a decrease in demand and not quantity demanded actually. If you think about this actually, because increase and decrease in demand actually shift the demand curve backward or rightward. Decrease in quantity demanded leads to movement along the demand curve. So first of all, you have to think about what is being asked in the question. Two goods have to be consumed simultaneously are, we know the answer for these. This, these are complementary goods. Which of the following pair of commodities is an example of substitutes? Coffee and milk? No, they have to be consumed together. Diamond and cow, they're not even related goods, unrelated goods. Pen and ink, no, they have to be consumed together. Mustard oil and coconut oil, definitely yes. So the answer is D. Come to the next question. Bread and butter, lamb and mint sauce. Illustrate the kind of interrelated demand known as. So they have to be used together, right? So, because they have to be used together, they are joint demand. Okay. So, they are known as joint demand. Now, here, let's go ahead and understand the difference between the various kind of demands. So, the first one is known as rival demand. Goods for rival good are, or you know, the rival demand is basically a demand when Consumption by one individual, rivalrous, consumption by one reduces consumption available for other. Consumption for other. For example, what is rival demand? For example, you and your friend have gone to a cafe to have a pizza. Okay. And this pizza has, let's say, six slices. Your friend quickly has four or five slices of pizza. You will just be left up with one. For every extra unit that your friend eats, the amount of pizza available for you decreases. That is called rivalrous demand. Demand by one individual reduces the consumption available to the other. The second is written as composite demand. So please write down composite demand is basically a demand where you are going ahead and you are uh, demanding something for something else. Like for example, when people may demand wheat, not for consumption, but for production of bread. So you're demanding something for something else. This is um, composite demand. It's, it's, a, it's basically a derived demand. Take another example. For example, you are demanding land for building houses. You are demanding steel for building tanks. This is all composite demand. You are demanding something for demanding, uh, you know, for the production of something else. Now, if we go ahead and we think about the third one, that's known as a competitive demand. So a competitive demand is basically the demand which occurs then there can be alternative services that the customer can choose from. So, for example, uh, you know, let's say substitute goods, tea and coffee, meat and fish. These are all competitive demands. And at last, we have joint demand, the goods which are to be used together. Right? So, this is how bread and butter become joint demand okay now let's go to the next question a commodity the price of which has fallen but is expected to fall further will present a demand curve which is so the answer to the 19th would be a regressive at the lower end so basically there are two types of uh, decrease or increase one is known as regressive one is known as progressive. 
progressive basically says that as you decrease the price the increase in the quantity will be by more and more amount so ideally you know when you decrease the price from p1 to p2 the increase in my quantity will be this it will be more regressive says when you decrease the price quantity will increase but by a lesser amount so basically what is going to happen when you decrease the price quantity will increase but by a lower amount something like this okay it's still increasing but by a lower amount now what is going to happen is that because i am expecting the price to fall further in the future currently i will follow this and in future when price will decrease further when i am expecting the price to decrease further i will increase my quantity by a huge amount so imagine this when price decreases from 10 to 9 if you know that the price is going to go all the way to 6 here you will increase your demand but by a lower amount and you will increase your demand only by a higher amount later isn't it so your slope is going to be flatter it's going to be regressive in the lower end and your slope is going to be steeper initially in the upper end is this making sense so basically what are we saying that the slope is going to be just understand in terms of slope that the slope is going to be flatter a small decrease in price is going to cause huge increase in quantity later but today when price decreases your quantity will increase only by a smaller amount so the demand curve will be something like this like this steeper and then flatter on the other hand regressive at upper end would would have meant flatter up at upper end and then steeper something like this are you getting it so the point is that it is regressive at the lower end because in the future you will increase your quantity more now consider the 20th question when an individual's income falls his demand for inferior goods so inferior goods have opposite relationship with income when income increases demand decreases when income decreases demand increases so therefore they are going to move in opposite direction so because my income is decreasing i have to go towards inferior commodities i cannot consume normal commodities so the demand for inferior goods will increase right so the answer for 20 year is a okay thank you